All right, everybody. Uh, today we are going high altitude. High altitude. Well, not literally, of course, but we're doing a deep dive into what happens to the the gut when you're way up in the mountains. Oh wow! We're using some pretty uh, cutting edge research here. Okay. A scientific review article called "High Altitude Exposure and Intestinal Barrier Dysfunction." Intestinal barrier dysfunction. Yeah. What is that? It's basically leaky gut. Leaky gut. But we're going to break it down exactly why that happens at high altitudes. You know, it's just how everyone jokes about strange digestion on mountain trips. Right. We're going to see if it's actually more than just the trail stack. Yeah, let's start with the basics. The gut has this amazing barrier, keeps the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. Right. But at high altitude, things get a little more complicated. So explain this to me. Yeah. The gut actually prefers a low oxygen environment. That's right. That seems kind of intuitive. It does, doesn't it? It normally thrives in what's called physiologic hypoxia. Physiologic hypoxia. Meaning low oxygen is its happy place. Really? So there's this gradient of oxygen that's higher in the tissue surrounding the gut. Okay. And lower and lower as you get closer to the inside of the gut, this is what keeps things running smoothly. But then you go up a mountain and suddenly the air is thin. Exactly. And your body freaks out a little bit. Right. It senses low blood oxygen. Yeah. And tries to compensate. Oh. By constricting blood vessels, yeah. especially the ones that are going to the gut. Oh. So it's prioritizing oxygen delivery to vital organs like your brain and your heart. Makes sense. But the gut takes a hit. So less blood flow to the gut. Yes. That's where the weak you get them. I got it. That reduced blood flow or vasoconstriction can actually damage the lining of the gut, mm. making it more permeable. Imagine like tiny gaps opening up, letting things through that shouldn't be there. Oh. Um, and get this one study found that this permeability can double. Double. When in just a few days of being in high altitude. Wait, seriously? Just a few days? Yeah. That's crazy. It is. F it shows how quickly our bodies react to high altitude environments. Wow. And this leaky gut situation can trigger a whole cascade of problems. Wait, what, what happens when stuff starts leaking out? Think inflammation. Information. The body sees these foreign particles escaping from the gut yeah. and goes into defense mode. Right. And while inflammation is a natural part of the healing process, mm -hmm. too much of it, especially at high altitude, can lead to more serious issues. Okay. So we got a leaky gut inflammation brewing. Right. This is starting to paint a picture of why people have so many tummy troubles up in the mountains. Right. And we haven't even factored in the impact on the gut's microbiome yet. Oh, the microbiome. All those trillions of bacteria that live in your gut. Yeah. And play a crucial role in digestion and overall health. So what happens to our gut bacteria at high altitude? Do we like go on vacation or something? Not quite. Okay. Unfortunately, high altitude can disrupt the delicate balance of our gut microbiome. Studies have shown that it leads to some unfavorable changes, an increase in potentially harmful bacteria, and a decrease in beneficial ones. So not always the gut getting leaky, but the did guys are outnumbered. That's right. It's not good. It's a recipe for digestive distress, mm. for sure. And things can get even more complicated when you add exercise into the mix. Of course, because nobody just sits around at high altitude. Right. We're usually hiking, climbing, pushing our limits. Exactly. And while exercise is generally good for us, yeah. at high altitude, it can put an extra strain on the gut. Doctor. Remember how we talk about blood flow getting diverted away from the gut? Yeah. Well, exercise amplifies that effect. So all that blood is going to our muscles. Exactly. Leaving the gut high and dry. Pretty much. Oh, man. And that can exacerbate the problems we've been talking about. More damage to the gut lining, more inflammation, and potentially even more leaky gut. So what you're saying is that intense mountain marathon might not be the best idea for my gut. You know, it's all about balance. Right. Pushing yourself physically is great. Yeah. But it's also important to listen to your body. Uh -huh. And be mindful of the potential impacts on your gut. And what about all the medications people take for altitude sickness? Can those be affecting our gut as well? That's a great question and a complex one. Okay. Some medications like acetazolamide. Acetazolamide. Which is commonly prescribed for altitude sickness prevention can actually cause gastrointestinal issues as a side effect. So it's supposed to help you acquiritize, but it might also upset your stomach. It's a bit of a trade-off. Yeah. And the research on acetazolamide's specific effects on the gut at high altitude is actually a bit mixed. Mm. Some studies suggest it might be harmful, oh. while others point to potential benefits. 
What about other medications like ibuprofen that people often take for headaches or inflammation at high altitude? NSAIDs like ibuprofen here are definitely popular among adventurers, but they come with their own set of risks and benefits when it comes to get health. So popping a pill to ease those altitude-induced aches might not be the best move for our gut in the long run. It's a balancing act, as with most things. It's okay. NSAIDs can help reduce inflammation, uh -huh. but they can also make the gut more susceptible to damage. Uh -huh. We'll get into the details of that a little later. Okay, so high altitude itself is a bit of a debt buster. Yeah. And exercise and medication can add fuel to the fire. Right. It's starting to sound like we need a superhero for a gut up there. Well, what if I told you there might be some gut guardians out there in the form of dietary supplements? So that's what I'm talking about. Tell me more about these gut faving superheroes. I will talk about that when we come back after the break. That sounds good. So before the break, we were talking gut guardians. Right, those dietary supplements that might help protect your gut from the stresses of high altitude. Exactly like some kind of internal armor for our intestines. I like that analogy. So which supplements are showing promise and how do they actually work? One of the most interesting ones is glutamine. It's an amino acid. And your gut cells absolutely love it. It's like their preferred fuel source. So you're saying it's like giving them an energy drink when they need it most. Exactly. Those cells are working overtime at high altitude. With less oxygen and less blood flow, they could use a boost. Makes that so glutamine gives them more energy, but it doesn't stop there, right? Because it stop there, it actually straightens the connections between those gut cells. Oh, wow. Reinforcing that barrier we were talking about. So it's a two-for-one deal, energy boost, and stronger defenses. Exactly. And I like it. What does gun research say about its effectiveness at high altitude specifically? Well, there's this study where they exposed rats to simulated high altitude. Hmm. And the ones who got glutamine supplements had significantly less gut damage their intestines look much healthier. Wow, so it actually made a visible difference. It did. And other studies have shown that glutamine can help reduce inflammation and oxidative stress after exercise at altitude. Okay, so glutamine is definitely a contender for our gut guardian team. Yeah. What else is on the last year? Another fascinating one is bovine colostrum. Hold on, are we talking about colostrum from cows? You got to, it's the first milk produced after a Paul gives birth. Yeah. And it's packed with nutrients and immune factors that help calves develop a strong immune system. I've heard it's like super milk for babies, but how does that translate to protecting our bets at high altitude? Researchers believe that some of those same benefits can apply to adults. Interesting. Bovine colostrum can help strengthen the gut lining. Possibly by increasing those tight junction proteins we talked about earlier, uh -huh. and even by boosting heat shock proteins. Heat shock protein moves like a Gets personal repair crew, right? Exactly. They help cells cope with stress and prevent damage. Pretty important at high altitude. For sure. So even at sea level, it's helping the gut recover from strenuous activity. That's what some studies suggest. Of course, we need more research to confirm how this works, specifically at high altitude. Right. But it's definitely a promising area. All right. Glutamine and bovine colostrum, our gut guardian lineup, is shaping up. Are there any other candidates we should consider? There's one more I think you'll find interesting curcumin. Wait, curcumin? Isn't that from turmeric, the golden spice everyone's raving about? You're right, and it's not just hype. Curcumin has potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Okay. And studies show it can help protect the gut from damage caused by oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is basically like rust forming on your cells, right? That's a great analogy, and curcumin helps to combat that there's research suggesting you can even protect the lungs from damage in low oxygen environment. So if it can shield the lungs, it makes sense that it might do the same for the gut at high altitude. It's a logical connection. Yeah. We need more research to confirm those gut-specific benefits at altitude. Right. But it's an exciting possibility. Okay, curcumin is definitely going on my watch list. Before we move on, I remember you mentioned probiotics as potential gut projectors too. Yes. Probiotics are live microorganisms. They can offer various health benefits when you consume them. Most people think of them for like a better digestion. Right. But they can do a lot more than that. Right. Right. Some strains of probiotics have been shown to improve the balance of bacteria in the gut, increasing the good guys and decreasing the bad. So could probiotics potentially counteract those negative shifts in gut bacteria that happen at high altitude? That's the hope. They could potentially help restore that delicate balance. And some probiotics have also been shown to reduce intestinal permeability, basically making the gut less leaky in response to all sorts of stressors. It sounds like probiotics could be a key player in keeping our gut healthy at the mountains. 
What does the research say about their effectiveness at high altitudes specifically? The research on probiotics in high altitude is still in its early stages. Oh, okay. But some studies have shown encouraging results. We need more research to know for sure which strains are most beneficial, the optimal dosages, and how they work in the long term. Okay, so it's not a magic bullet just yet, but definitely something to keep an eye on. So it seems like we have a good starting point for protecting our gut at high altitude. Smart choices about pacing and hydration, maybe consider adding some of these supplements. What else should people keep in mind? You know, I think it's important to remember that everyone is different. That's true. What works for one person might not work for another. It's all about listening to your own body and figuring out what feels best for you. That's great advice. Pay attention to your gut literally and figuratively. And remember, we're just scratching the surface here. There's so much more to learn about this fascinating connection between high altitude and gut health. Absolutely. And when we come back, we'll explore a truly mind-blowing question that connects gut health to altitude acclimatization and even altitude sickness. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're back, and I am ready for that uh, mind-blowing question. Okay. That you teased about gut health and altitude acclimatization. Right. I feel like we've already learned so much. Yeah. But I am always up for more aha moments. Well, think about this. What if taking care of your gut could actually make you better at acclimatizing to high altitude? Okay. And potentially even reduce your risk of altitude sickness. Well, okay, now that would be a Dan changer. How, how could those two things even be connected? Well, we know that the gut plays a huge role in our immune system. Right. And we've seen how high altitude can kind of throw that system off balance. Right. Triggering inflammation and all those uncomfortable symptoms. It's like a domino effect. But it's thin air, stress is the gut. The gut gets leaky and suddenly your immune system is like in overdrive. Exactly. Trying to clean up the mess. Precisely. So imagine if you had a strong, resilient gut going into that environment. Okay. A gut with a healthy microbiome, a tight barrier ready to handle the stress. So you're saying a healthy gut could actually help dampen that whole inflammatory cascade. Yeah. And make the acclimatization process smoother. That's the hypothesis. It's definitely an area that needs more research. Uh huh. But it makes a lot of sense when you consider how interconnected our bodies are. We tend to think of the gut and the respiratory system as separate. Right. But they're clearly influencing each other in these high altitude situations. It really highlights how a holistic approach to health is so important, especially when you're pushing your body to Linux in extreme environments. It's not just about treating the symptoms. Right. It's about understanding the underlying causes and supporting the body's natural ability to adapt. Absolutely. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of high altitude and that health, What's the biggest takeaway you want listeners to walk away with? I think the biggest takeaway is that high altitude is undoubtedly a challenge for the entire body, yeah. including the gut. But the more we understand about how this unique environment affects our digestive systems, right. the better equipped we are to prepare and take care of ourselves. Exactly. We can make smart choices about piecing hydration and even consider adding some of those gut-supporting supplements we this done. Right. Who knows, maybe one day we'll have a whole gut-boosting protocol that helps prevent altitude sickness altogether. That would be incredible. It would make a huge difference for adventurers, researchers, and anyone who lives or works at high altitude. For sure. Well, it's amazing to think how much we're still learning about the human body and its incredible ability to adapt. Yes. But this deep dive has definitely armed us with some valuable knowledge to navigate the challenges of high altitude and keep our guts happy and healthy along the way. So to everyone listening, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep those guts strong. And that is our show for today. Thanks for tuning into the deep dive. See you next time.